to quickly introduce myself, my name is Evan Cooper. I'm a customer success manager here at Tracker, uh, currently based in Los Angeles. Uh, I've been with the organization for a little over four and a half years now. And really today, what we will be reviewing is how you can really make every dollar count with your influencer programs. So for the folks who are on the call, you know, my hope is that you leave this workshop feeling confident in where you're investing your influence marketing dollars. So while I hope most of you have this context, for the folks that don't know, Tracker is the number one influencer marketing software for data-driven marketers. Our platform provides everything from influencer discovery to campaign management to program reporting, all the way up to market benchmarking. We're proud and really lucky to work with some of the best brands in the world, including L'Oreal, Cody, Shiseido, Samsung, Unilever, just to name a few. Now that my marketing obligations are out of the way, let's get into the good stuff. To kick things off, I have a really fun exercise for everyone. So let's say, in theory, your boss gives you 50K more budget for your influencer program. For the folks on the call, would you say that you feel more like Elaine on the left or Michael here on the right? So what I'm going to do is add a quick poll. And if folks could take 30 seconds to vote, that would be awesome. I'm surprised that Elaine is getting, is getting more votes at the moment. It's impressive. So it seemed like it was skewing a little bit towards more Elaine, but you know we've really got a confident group here, and you know I, I do love to see it. However, if you did choose Michael, this is completely understandable. So in fact, we recently conducted a survey and found that thirty percent of marketers actually don't know how the ROI of their influencer programs compared to other strategies. So in light of this, it probably comes as no surprise that this lack of insight extends to the campaign level as well. In fact, the common mistake that I often see with brands that they make is that they either don't know to do or how to do post-campaign audits to spend their money in smarter ways the next time around. So what I'm showing you here on this slide is an actual example of something that happened with a real brand. I obviously can't tell you who it is, but I can tell you that it's a skincare brand that invested heavily in influence marketing between 2020 and 2021. So the story starts off as every marketer's dream. You know, the brand decided to invest more in their influencer programs. Over the course of the next year, things unfortunately ended up turning into every marketer's nightmare. They ended up investing their healthy budgets into the wrong influencer tier and social platform, and as a result, actually saw a decline in their campaign performance. I mean, imagine having to explain to your boss why your performance got worse with more budget. So let's dive into you know, what exactly happened here. So as you can see by these graphs, the brand decided to invest roughly 40% of their budget in the mid-tier influencers on YouTube. Why they made this decision, who knows? Maybe they read somewhere that this tier is the best. Maybe their competitors are investing heavily in this tier. Sometimes strategies can get blurred with the noise of many external factors, but for whatever the reason, they ended up overinvesting in something that clearly doesn't work for the brand. So you might be asking yourself, well, you know, what could they have done differently? To me, the answer is, is pretty simple. So had they conducted a spend efficiency audit before deciding on their long-term strategy, they would have known to lean into their top tier partners on TikTok as the most efficient awareness driver for the brand. And this is really the power of data. It gives you clarity. So there are many different paths to success within influence marketing. And if you figure out how to use your own data, which in this case is spend efficiency, you can really craft your own path to success. So I know we've talked a big game about spend efficiency to this point, and maybe we've scared some of you, which is you know good and healthy because this is really an important topic. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of what exactly spend efficiency is, how you can measure it, and you know what you can do to really maximize every single belt. So I just wanted to pause here and make sure that we are all on the same page. So to quickly define, spend efficiency is the ability to measure the effectiveness of your influencer marketing investments to maximize results. However, before you measure anything, you need to make sure that you have the right data to understand the following points. So the objectives of the influencer's content and the corresponding KPIs, your total spend across the campaigns over a set period of time, uh, the cost per influencer itemized all the way down to deliverables and even usage rates, any boosting investments that may have been applied to the influencer's content, and lastly, the performance per deliverable. I do want to note that if you don't have pre-existing data, that's totally fine. Just make sure you are starting to collect and document from this point going forward. Now, there are, of course, quite a few elements to this, but the important thing to focus on is what metrics are going to map back to the key objectives of your campaign. So, for example, if your objective is to drive awareness, you'll probably want to focus on CPV or cost per video view um, as your main KPI. Whereas if your campaign was focused on pushing bottom of the funnel traffic, you would likely want to look more at CPC or cost per click here. On this next slide, I have an example of how those metri metrics could be used to make more informed decisions. Utilizing you know, average costs, number of deliverables, and performance metrics like average views per post, you could essentially forecast your spend across the various tiers. 
Even a simple spreadsheet like this can be super, super useful for a super useful tool, excuse me, for marketers that are trying to figure out what they can afford in terms of deliverables, influencers, and even better, I've really seen it used as an asset in budgeting conversations with managers. I mean, imagine being able to go to your you know, manager with specific numbers and rationale uh, when you're asking for more budget. I think that would be a lot more compelling than, you know, sort of like providing them with something vague and based off of intuition. So forecasting and budgeting allocation is, of course, one way that you can use spend efficiency to make those more informed decisions. But here are some other bigger picture questions that it also might help you answer. So, you know, what influencers perform best in my campaign? Which campaigns are driving the best return for us? And as we reviewed with the example brand before, what platform should I really be investing in? So now what we're going to do is transition to a little bit of a working session. So let's address this first question of, am I working with the right influencers? And when can I justify going outside the outline benchmarks? So the first step here that you want to do is set a target to help you understand if your investments are in line with your financial objectives. Spend optimization, in my opinion, is you know really one of those exercises where the more that you put in, the more that you'll ultimately get out. So in light of this, I think it's important to record your spend and performance metrics as much as possible. Tracker is a system that allows you to easily do this seamlessly all in one place. But even if you don't have a software, I always say spreadsheets are, are better than nothing. Um, if you take anything away from this slide, it's that historical data should be organized and stored somewhere that is easily accessible to your team to really help make those decisions. So the second step here is to map influencers on objectives to help optimize your strategy and ROI. So for example, you might want to only partner with Alexis here, who's in the you know, use tactically section. If she happens to hold the attention of new audience demographics you want to tap into, like let's say you know, Gen Zers interested in NPC TikTok streams. Um, in this case, the data gives you a foundation for you to build, to base your decisions off of, but sometimes other factors will convince you, and rightly so, to spend a little bit more than your ideal budget. That being said, it is important to note that boosting efforts do play a role in spend efficiency benchmarks. So those should also be considered uh, when you are doing this sort of analysis. So for example, Caroline here at the top, you can see that the cost per video was $20,000, our boosting was 35K. And you know, really what that does is takes us presumably from the use tactically quadrant here all the way over to the good deal section. So you know, that just sort of illustrates the, uh, the impact that boosting efforts can have on this sort of analysis. So let's walk through the scenario where you know you don't get the value you thought from an influence you partnered with, and you know what do you really do next? So the first step that I would recommend is use the map that we just reviewed to set goals to move influencers from you know the the red quadrant all the way into the green quadrant. Um, the second step that I would recommend is to calculate what a more optimal rate would have been for a partner had they achieved your target CPV in this instance. And then the last step would really be to leverage your target CPV to provide a more dynamic benchmark for where you want to move your rates should you decide to partner with any of these influencers again. So you can really use it as like a point of negotiation if you were to retain influencers for future activations, let's say. The next question that comes to mind for me is, you know, what are your options for optimizing spend efficiency? And, you know, I've really gone ahead and organized these into three core buckets. So the first is to reallocate into better investments. Going back to my previous example, if you were to take that 97K from your least efficient influencers and reallocate it towards additional deliverables with their most efficient partners, you could have potentially received an additional 9.7 million video views on that content. The second bucket here is to pour fuel on the fire. So if you do see success and strong efficiency from an influencer's content, there's an opportunity to further snowball that success via boosting efforts. So my advice is to give yourself some you know, additional budgeting cushions so that if you have a viral piece of content, you're ready to amplify it even further with those paid media efforts. And then the third bucket here is just to test out new partners. So they say out with the old and inefficient, and in this instance, in with the new. So don't continue to reinvest your dollars in partners that aren't proving to be strong performers. Instead, what I'd recommend is using that budget you would have spent on those partners and test a new pool of talent to see who could be a potential future star for your brand. So I get this question, this next question a lot. If I'm only doing product seeding, should I still uh, you know, assess spend efficiency? So you know, I know for brands and perhaps like the hospitality space, Product seeding may not be as relevant of a topic for you, but for anyone that does offer products like you know folks in the the beauty, the fashion, consumer electronics, you know home goods uh, verticals, product seeding is often a big part of your influencer marketing strategy. So the question becomes: Is this something that we should track for mailers? So to me, the answer is, of course, a resounding yes. So even though you're not paying for content, mailers are still obviously a big investment. So if you're seeding to one influencer, maybe that margin doesn't add up to too much. But you know, as you begin to you know, compile mailers of tens, hundreds of influencers, those costs can add up pretty quickly. 
And I found this stat over here on the right to be super interesting. So basically what we found is that 53% of marketers spend between 10 and 200K on influencer seeding campaigns annually. So, you know, wouldn't you really want to understand if your 200K investment had any return on it? So when it comes to these product seedings, I think it is worth considering the bullet points when thinking through how you can optimize your mailers. So the first is, you know, what's your strategy for identifying organic brand advocates? How are you tracking the posting rate over a given period of time? You know, what's the cost of each gift that you're seeding to these influencers? And are you regularly optimizing your mailing list? So we all know that, you know, sending products is an effective first step in building a pipeline of loyal ambassadors. So, you know, why, why not be thoughtful in our approach? So spend efficiency, in, in my opinion, isn't really like a one and done deal. If you're continuing to invest and you're taking those key learnings and applying them to the most efficient areas, the more you should see your efforts improving over time. So going back to my point earlier of the more that you put in, the more that you'll ultimately get out. I have another example to share here for everyone. So in the graph on the right hand side of the page. So yes, the brand is at least capturing their spend over time, which is you know, an important first step because that means that you know, the program is in fact measurable. But as you can see, despite investing more in their program from January to July, they're clearly not gaining any efficiency as the CPV is you know, all over the place and it's even spiking in the most recent month. So conversely, with the graph on the left, the brand has invested the same amount, yet the CPV is on a considerable downward slope, which is a great representation of a measurable and predictable performance-driven strategy. And as you can see, you know, the CPV does go down here in July. So what I will say is you know, just knowing where you stand can be a helpful first step. And without this type of data, there's no way to improve or find your path forward. So as I found with hosting this webinar, they say the best way to learn is by doing. So to wrap things up today, I do have a spend efficiency test to see who was really paying attention uh, with the slides that I just shared. So in this example, if you had, let's say, 25K more to spend on the campaign, how would you go about investing it? Would it be with influencer A, who has a following of 5 million, total views of 1 million, and a total spend of 25K? Or would it be influencer B who has a following of 800K, total views of 600K, and the total spend was only 10K? So we have a poll that's live. Let's just pull that up here really quickly. I'm seeing a few votes coming in for influencer B. Just give it another 30 seconds or so. So it seems like a lot of people are, are piling on with the uh, with influencer B here. We got 100% vote so far. Anyone dare to, to vote for influencer A? All right, one, one vote for influencer A. There we go. So if you did actually happen to vote for influencer B, you know that was in fact the right the, the right selection. So influencer B in this instance had a CPV of 0 0.016 versus influencer A who had a CPV of 0.1 of 0.25, excuse me. So despite getting more views with influencer A, you know influencer B was actually more efficient. So the takeaway here that you know I would recommend is don't fall victim to the vanity metrics of solely considering follower count, but rather looking at the total spend divided by your primary KPI. So in this last slide here, I did just want to uh, share a checklist that we have to really make every dollar count. So as a follow-up, you know, this is a checklist that we put in place or a cheat sheet in a sense uh, that you can reference again in the future. So to you know, recap everything that we reviewed today, first step is you, know, you want to match your KPIs to your business or campaign objectives. You want to audit your campaigns with spend efficiency benchmarks. Optimize your performance with the most efficient partners, track your progress to ensure you're improving over time, and then set goals, but also leave room for you know, risk-taking and test and learn strategies. So that concludes the slides portion of what I wanted to review today. I did want to open it up with the remaining time that we have left for anyone who has questions. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and check the Q&A here. Okay, so we have one from, um, you know, Rachel here. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's a really great question. So can you dig deeper into how spend efficiency findings can help me with negotiate with influencers? So I would say that, um, you know, spend, effic spend efficiency findings are probably easiest to leverage when you are renegotiating with influencers for like a second activation, because you will have those benchmarks in place. Um, and you can sort of like utilize the historical data to indicate to the influencer that they either over or probably under indexed um, based off of the benchmarks that you guys have set up. So, you know, that, that would be my first element of what I would recommend here. And the second thing I would say is just to do your homework on the potential partners, you know, uh, rates and, you know, before negotiating and really try and plot out as many different like deliverable scenarios as possible. So that you really have like a concrete idea of how much you'd be willing to spend per deliverable across the various tiers when building out the campaign. So, so, you know, I think it is also important to recognize that each negotiation should 
you know, ideally feel like a conversation. You know, the influencer space is a very small world. And at the end of the day, it's really all about relationship building. So even if something doesn't work out for a current activation, let's say, that's not to say that down the road, it wouldn't necessarily work. And, you know, that is important. But I would say, you know, building a relationship is sort of the, the paramount sort of takeaway that I'd recommend here. So another question that we got here is, does Tracker have any features that make spend efficiency analysis any, any easier? So yes, absolutely. So as a customer success manager, I am heavily involved in these sort of analyses on a regular basis. Um, Tracker has a robust suite of spend efficiency tools that enable you to analyze ROI across all relevant KPIs. So everything that I outlined before, um, from campaign specific and influencer specific performance, all the way up to market or the global level. Um, so if you are interested in learning a little bit more about Tracker's spend efficiency, um, I would highly recommend utilizing the uh, schedule a demo button uh, and talking with someone on our sales team a little bit more. And this last one is, how would you suggest best determine benchmarks without a software? I briefly shared this before, but you know, really what I would recommend is just starting to input the data and, you know, create those, create those charts, right? So data is, is king. And the more information that you have, the more informed decisions that you can make in the future. That being said, if you don't have any benchmarks in place and you don't have a software, what I'd recommend doing is actually just leaning in on your community as much as possible. I know there are a lot of great, you know, Facebook groups and, you know, sort of Reddit threads and, you know, sort of anything digitally online um, where communities live. I think you can sort of like ask those questions. And I'm sure that folks have insight into the various tiers of influencers and what a, you know, reasonable benchmark should be from a cost for post or cost for video perspective. All right. And one more. Uh, so how do you determine average views when working out rough CPV for negotiating with influencers as views vary so much across this platform? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is worth uh, collecting as much data as possible on these influencers. This can be done on a platform by platform basis. Uh, that is definitely a more advanced approach. What I would recommend is, you know, in Tracker, and I'm just plugging plugging the platform because this is sort of like how my workflow typically goes. You do have the ability to filter the last two and a half years of content across the influencer's profile and search for specific keywords. So oftentimes what I do recommend to clients is search for mentions of sponsored posts, you know, ad, spawn, sponsor, ambassador, things of that nature, and really begin to create a custom report that analyzes those mentions and you know it can be industry sort of agnostic there and really begin to build out a report that analyzes you know when they did mention sponsored disclosures in their content how many views per post did they get and then basically dividing those total views by the number of posts and that will help you land on a average views per uh, post which can help inform the cost per video when negotiating with an influencer in the future so in in the platform as well this can also be broken out by uh, the various different platforms, depending on the filter that you do apply. Um, so, you know, without a platform, it's kind of difficult to do. But I think with a solution in place, that sort of analysis would be relatively straightforward. So, you know, that sort of concludes the uh, the Q and A section. Uh, obviously, feel free to continue to reach out to our team, and we are more than happy to answer any additional questions that you guys have. But really, just wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to join me today, and of course, asking such great questions. 